speaker is going to highlight the immersive hybrid evolution. It's the hardware, the software, the technology that fuels the creative, the, the creative sector. Please welcome the CEO of Auction One Events, Mr. Sujoy Sherian. The cool thing about events like this is the opportunity to connect and the possibilities of exploring new hardware, software and the synergy between all of these worlds together. That's the hybrid world and the real world. Earlier this year, with the tech that I saw at the startups at CES in Vegas and then IAC in Barcelona and now here in Riyadh, I'm seeing the trend really picking up when it comes to what's next in terms of hardware and software and the technology that's going to fuel the creative economy. How do you get innovative in the events industry or in the film industry when it comes to the corporate world and what is it that we can do differently? To approach our clients who always keep saying give us something different. It's about the word innovation and everybody misunderstands that because it's uh, not always something that's never been seen before or done before in terms of hardware and software. It's very often uh, reinventing existing technologies that are available in the industry, putting them together and packaging them as an experience that has been never been seen or done before. And everything that you see here, right down to holographics to augmented reality AI, has been in, in, in the market for a number of years. It's only picked up in uh, today's world as average consumers can afford it. That's why we see more of it on the floor today. But it doesn't mean that the technology was innovative and done today. It's about the right time, the right place, and the right hands. And making sure that there are people who can consume that technology. If we did not have smartphones today, we would never be able to enjoy AR in its best capacity. Right? So 10 years ago, with a Nokia phone and, and a dial pad, you would never have the technology on your device to experience what you see today, uh, which is built into your smartphones. And then comes the question of AI. There's so much more than just a deep learning. There's so much more than processing the data. Again, there's Otosys that does voice uh, uh, analysis based on hybrid events and people engaging to see what level of engagement, at what point did they lose interest, at what point has their voice or their tones changed when it comes to the, the content that they're absorbing. And that kind of engagement gives the, the content creators so much more the understanding of what they need to change in the way they produce their content because now they are understanding much deeper, more than just the current data that we see today of okay, how many people are online, how many likes or how many comments and we and we base a judgment and analytics based on that. But that is a very old and cliche way of doing it. Things are changing in the way how AI will be used in understanding your audience and its reaction. And then there is the open AI which is another topic by itself and then chat. Uh, GBD and all of that that's coming into play which is evolving as we progress. So what are the possibilities? What are the hardwares that are out today? Uh, there are some in R&D, there are some already in, in uh, prototyping while there are many that are already out in the market. One of them is uh, CAT VR. This is a solution that opens boundaries in the physical world for you to walk freely in the virtual world which is a treadmill which is 360, you're just strapped onto the back. Now I have the opportunity to move freely. Now imagine the freedom here. I have no boundaries anymore. I can jump into a virtual world, move or run in any direction. Imagine the gamification experience here where I could move around and see things moving around me and do all of those things without the restriction of oh, I'm gonna walk into a wall because that's always your worry. Am I gonna bang into something? Am I gonna trip? Am I gonna fall? With 360 treadmills, this ends those challenges because now your virtual world has you know an open uh, space where you want to move but your physical world is going to stop you this does not you can just keep moving now imagine with that freedom of movement but you're still in a virtual space which means you know this world cannot do anything to you imagine now you're you're in a game and you have the option to feel an impact of a kick feel the impact of a bullet feel lasers hitting you or feel ants crawling up your body or when you step into water you feel your feet are wet so that's next level of engagement this opens a whole new door of content creation and experiences and this is something that's going to be a major contribution from my point of view for the creative economy you have the the option of integrating it into training you can use it in public safety 
and the same thing goes for several other industries when it comes to sports. You can have people uh, train, you can use it for rehab, you can get people to perfect the way they move depending on, on which sports they're trading from and from an average user right up to a professional. Of course right now because of the cost of the hardware and the technology, it's pros that are using it already but it's definitely going to be affordable very soon for consumers. And having said that, these are the few brands that are already in the market and market leaders that have some tech that is in place that contributes to these kind of experiences and many of them are something that I physically tested. For example, the Ovo, that's something that's there on my channel, you can watch it, I have worn it, I've played games and I've actually felt the impact. I was one hell of an experience. But then, again, this is still the evolution of the hardware. As uh, global research data says, it's it's potentially a 20 plus billion dollar industry within the next seven to eight years. Just the hardware haptics and, and the hardware that I just uh, presented. So what's the next thing after that? Everyone says, okay, now it's haptics and then the 360 thread mill, so what's beyond that? There is a lot more beyond that. And, and, and we've been working with several of these companies over, over the years and, and some brilliant tech is in the making, which we'll see over the next five to 10 years, which will be a game changer. And that is reactive environments. This is something that's really impressed me uh, uh, earlier this year from the, from the prototypes that I've seen. And these prototypes, is basically changing the way things would move around you, under you, and the way you feel things. One was a 360 treadmill. What was the, what's the next? This is what it would be, where you have the option to get into immersive experience spaces where your flow reacts to you. Things you touch react to you. You have the option of going, for example, let's say I want to go, uh, you know, snowboarding on the Alps, but I can't afford to go there, I don't have the time to go there. I could have exactly the same experience through through the VR, through the haptics, feeling the cold, feeling the wind against me, and then having myself balance and being thrown off the floor if I've done the wrong thing. Right? So, so those kind of experiences would, would be possible with, with something like this. So with, with Myros and several others who are, who are in the industry working on designing this thing, it would be a complete game changer. This is of course in R&D, and this is the direction where it's going, where environments can be now transformed and have this haptic element within the space and not just on your suit. So where next when it comes to current trend in terms of investments in the creative economy for those who are taking the leap and jumping into creating these new experiences using the hardware that's already available and taking that risk to invest their time, effort and money in, in, in putting things together. One of them is Caliburs. Now imagine VR cinema. Till today we've always watched movies and I'm sure everyone in the audience here has always said, ah, that was a bad ending. I wish the ending was this way. I wish he or she did this. You know, you have your version of how that movie should have been. But you have no control over what the director wanted to do and he did his climax the way he wanted to. Now imagine the element of gamification within your experience watching the movie where you have the opportunity to take decisions on behalf of the character. That's possible now and that's what's being done in Caligos and several other platforms where you at certain points take decisions just like a game. You're not playing the movie, you're not like playing a game, you're watching, but there are, there are various points within the movie where you take decisions on what should happen now. And then the, the algorithm is obviously written in a way that jumps to the content that plays based on your decision. So you could change your decision the second time you watch the movie and the movie would end differently. So there would be several versions of the movie that play with a different logic and based on several points and decisions that you take, you experience it and you decide how things should happen. Now imagine how cool is that, the movie the way you want it to be. Then when it comes to concerts, this is something again back in 2019 at an AV show, I was the only one talking about the integration of uh, hybrid concerts and everyone else in the live industry was against me. And that was of course pre-COVID. And they said it'll take decades for people to get used to getting into virtual spaces. But thanks to COVID, I think we've all jumped into it and been forced to get adapted to using uh, those types of software. So well, when it comes to this, this is again a topic we, we discussed earlier this morning. And I see great potential. It's not a threat to the industry. I think it's an opportunity. It, it expands the doors for the, in the creative economy because now the concert organizers or music creators 
uh, stage shows have the option to sell a lot more than the capacity of the venue. Because in your venue, that's your physical space, you're restricted to the number of people that can get there. Like here today, it's a house full. But imagine if there was an opportunity for people to, to virtually be here and not your today's virtual world where you're just walking around and looking at stands and interacting with nobody interacting back with you. I'm talking about you being able to engage with people, have the choice, for example, at a concert, to, to pay a little more and have backstage access, have the choice for multiple camera angles, to see the live concert from perspectives which you would have never seen before if you physically were at the event, and having the opportunity to engage with the artists, for example, if you take a backstage pass as a value add-on to your ticket, and being able to take a selfie with them. And I'm not talking about virtual experience here, I'm talking about hardware that is available today where you could be as close as we are standing today together and take selfies. All this is possible. For example, Lobby 3 is another hardware that has an option. It's a screen that's 86 inch and you can see a full size human behind the glasses, literally like you standing in between a glass and the artist is in front of you. And you can talk to them in real time. You can sign on the glass and get autographs and then send that to your, to your device. So there's hardware like that today possible. And then there's the, the experience of shopping, there's the experience of so much more that can be done. Uh, real estate, imagine you're doing now an event in Australia. You need to spend to go there to check the venue, then you need to spend to go there uh, with your client. Now, you virtually walk through it. Uh, most of the tech reviews are on my show, on my YouTube channel, from across the globe. You all can uh, take a look there. Most of the tech that I've spoken about has been featured there. And if you want to learn more, it's all on that page. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed the content. Thank you very much, I appreciate it.